Penny, can you um, tell us exactly what it is, what it means being a training partner and you're a training partner to the Sonar team? I am indeed, yeah, very lucky. I got asked um, by Hannah if I could go and do some training with them. Um, starting in January, uh, the offer was come, come to Miami and sail with us for three weeks. So uh, leapt at the opportunity for a bit of training in the sunshine. And, uh, and we had such a good time training with them out there and, uh, and pushing them hard and helping them on their speed work that I've then been helping them out through the, the rest of the, the year in order to get ready for the Games. So a, a training partner, you, you are there really just to put them through their paces? Are you racing against them? Sort of talk us through a typical day as, as a training partner. So we do a little bit of both. Essentially, um, they've got several boats because they are the only uh, British sonar crew. Um, and therefore they need someone to line up against. So they put three able-bodied sailors into their spare boat and sometimes we'll do speed work tuning runs with them. So we'll go out, we'll talk about the rig settings we're doing and how we're trying to set the boat up to sail as fast as possible. But then as we've worked towards again, so we've done much more race scenarios and helping them work on their starts and line up next to them, either to leeward of them, to windward of them, pushing them hard, and then on through race scenarios and, and crossing situations and rule scenarios. So what kind of experience had you had uh, prior to being asked by Hannah in terms of training and sailing with the Paralympic team? Uh, previously? Uh, very little. Uh, I know Helena Lucas very well. We grew up sailing toppers together and she did an able-bodied campaign before she went um, Paralympic sailing. And uh, so I, I had a little bit of experience um, sailing against her in able-bodied classes and also done a very little bit of coaching with Helena as well just to try and help her out on some starting stuff. But other than that, very little experience. And, uh, and from a personal point of view, one, I've learnt a lot more about sailing, communications in, in boats, uh, and working with the Paralympic guys with a three-person keelboat. But also it's really interesting to see how they cope with their disabilities um, and uh, how they actually turn them around. And they don't seem to be disabilities at all. They really use them to their strengths. And, uh, and they've got some cracking sense of humour, so we have a really good time with them. The sonar itself is that it can be sailed as an able-bodied four-person uh, boat. What sort of modifications are made to the boat for the Paralympic sailors? So, first of all, when uh, it's sailed as an able-bodied boat, they have an extra sail. They have the spinnaker uh, on the front. So, for the Paralympic guys, the first thing they do, they've got rid of that, and they don't allow um, the sailors to go outboard on the boat anywhere. So, they're not allowed onto the bow, and that's to make it a level playing field. Because obviously, if you've got someone um, who's um, lost their legs, got artificial legs, it can be quite difficult and dangerous for them on, on the bow. And, and so, as a level playing field. They get rid of all that problems, do away with the, the third sail and make sure that they all have to stay uh, inside the boat. And then the rules are flexible, they have to apply to make certain alterations uh, in order to account for their disability. So John, um, he's uh, normally in a wheelchair and they've adapted a seat and made a seat for the back of the boat for him helming so he can actually pull himself across from one side to the other, slide across his seat so when they tack he's on the same side that a normal able-bodied person would be. And then likewise for, for Hannah uh, at the bow of the boat, a few modifications in order that she can pull ropes and chain, do all the changing and the settings required with just one arm. So the sonar itself, uh, what is it like to sail? Um, it's actually quite a good boat to sail. It's a keel boat and um, some might think, oh, keel boat, slow, boring, we can't give the, the uh, Paralympic sailors anything exciting to sail. But when... Uh, I used to sail the, the Yingling, which was an able-bodied keelboat uh, in the Olympic Games, and uh, it was very annoying when the sonar went past and it was faster. Um, and, and it is faster than a number of, of the Olympic boats. So, um, so you know, it's, it is a good boat. And the beauty of it is, very much like the laser in able-bodied sailing, is it's a one design class. The boats are all supposed to be the same. You can have different sail makes uh, on there, but essentially it means they're all very similar speed, which means the racing is very, very tight, and you've got to be very good tactically in order to, to get an advantage and win the races. What can people look out for when they're watching uh, the sonar race at the Paralympic Games? Um, I think the racing will be very, very close at the front. Uh, there's a number of teams who have very strong medal potential. I know the Dutch uh, and the Israeli teams are very good rivals of, of the Brits and, uh, and be watching out for those to see how they cope. And then, uh, and then obviously looking uh, at our guys, you know, they've medalled at the last couple of world championships, definite medal favourites going in there and, uh, and I expect them to get off to a, a stable start to the series, nothing too flash, uh, hopefully no bad results and then progress from there and start putting the pressure on the other teams. So can you talk us through 
the sonar team that we have going in, sort of what are their strengths as a crew? If you could sort of talk us through uh, each member of the team. Uh, certainly you've got uh, John, who's the helm. Um, he's ex-military. Uh, don't know whether that's where he got a cracking sense of humour from and his terrible sense of jokes. Um, but uh, he's a real character, real fun, smiley, happy guy. Um, he uh, became disabled from a motorbike accident and, uh, and you know, his, um, his strength in the boat is his um, kind of desire to win. Uh, very often he's one-on-one -on -one tactics. We've done a lot of match racing with them and uh, he doesn't give an inch. He really, really makes sure that they get the advantage um, over the other team. Uh, sometimes the extent that that's all he can concentrate on and that's where Hannah comes in. She's the tactician in the boat. Um, looks at which way they're going to go up the beat to get them the best advantage and she's always that level person in the boat trying to make sure that the, the little uh, intricacies of certain boat on boat situations don't deflect from the overall race strategy uh, and putting that in and then um, Steve uh, Thomas who's the middleman, main sheet traveller trimming the boat, he's uh, involved in all the speed upwind essentially, if Steve's doing his job right then that boat will go really really fast and he needs to bounce off John and, and keep the comms going so that the boat's always in the groove uh, that, that they need it to be for the tactical plan that Hannah's putting forward. Have they been together a long time as a team? They have indeed, they actually went to Athens as a team, uh, didn't meddle there, Steve was very new to the team, he's learnt to sail with the team, Steve has, so it was very difficult for him to try and get up to speed. After Athens they, they went away the next year, won the world and they've had fantastic success at the world ever since then and worked really hard as a team. Went into Beijing as, uh, as potential medal favourites there and uh, came away empty handed and I know that they were so disappointed with that. They really took a hard look at their programme, what went wrong and, uh, and what they could do to, to get it right this time round. And, and they've really worked hard to tick all those boxes and make the change they need in order to go into these games again as a medal favourite and hopefully make sure they come home with the goods. The Paralympic squad effectively uh, going into the games, the, the, the sailors, the coaches, the support staff, you spent a lot of time with them. What, what are they like as a team? Are they a very, very close-knit uh, unit. They are very much so. Um, they operate within uh, the infrastructure of the whole Olympic um, team and uh, and the squads, and that gives them the benefit that they can use all the specialist uh, staff that they've got going with that. Um, but then within that, they also run their own camps. And over the past few months, when the Olympic Games final preparations have been going on, and then the Olympic Games. They've been running their own Paralympic camps um, down in Mylor in Cornwall and that's where the team bonding has really, really started to hit off and come together, helping out each other. They now know who they can go to for a little bit of a break, uh, to get away from maybe people within their own team, have a bit of a, a joke and a laugh uh, so they can re-concentrate and re-emphasise on their training. And, uh, and I think watching them down there, it's been really interesting to see how the personalities have all uh, moulded together and formed this really tight-knit community and I think that's going to be really important when the Games comes on because they're all three really strong medal contenders. Um, Nikki and Alex in the SCUD, uh, repeated world champions and they're going to have a lot of pressure on them going in there and it's going to be important for them to be able to find the other team members that they can bounce off, relax with. And then Helena Lucas at her second Paralympic Games, um, you know, same thing again, didn't medal in, in Beijing and, uh, and, you know, she's going to be looking to improve on that and finding the people, she's in a single-handed boat, finding people she can go and chat with and relax with will be really important and I think it'll be a big strength for the British team out there. How do the Paralympics sailors compare as athletes? Uh, well, it would be really easy to think, well, you know, they're not allowed outside the cockpit of the boat, so why should they be fit? Uh, you know, why put the effort in? They're never going to be as good as the, the Olympic sailors. But as I've said, when we line up against some three able-bodied people in their second boat, we have to work really, really hard not to beat them, to just keep up with them and push them and to be viable training partners for them. And, uh, and all of them are really, really dedicated to their campaigns as much as any of our Olympic sailors are. And, uh, and certainly Steve, he takes a real interest in his fitness. The main's quite hard to play, uh, quite heavy loads along with the traveller. And, uh, and he gives a lot of the able-bodied sailors a really good run for their money in, in the gym when he's pumping weights in there. And, you know, it's the same, same for all of them that... Um, they just get around their disabilities, they don't think about them and they make sure they maximise their campaign in all the areas they can just as they would if they were able-bodied sailors. You've worked with uh, John, Hannah and Steve 
closely over the last few months. How do you think you will feel if you see them on top of that podium in a few weeks' time? I absolutely hope and pray that we see them on the top of that podium. They've had a really hard, long period in the build-up to these games from Athens through to Beijing, lots of disappointments, and they absolutely have the ability to win that gold medal. There's some tough teams out there. We saw at the Olympic Games some of the favourites not winning. Um, but, you know, I've worked so hard with them and put so much in that I'm absolutely fingers crossed and I know they have the ability. So hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to give a massive cheer and a shout of support when they get on that on that podium. And we, we've seen that there's been a, a lot of people been very inspired by the Olympics. Um, and I imagine the same will be of the Paralympics, that there'll be youngsters out there who themselves may have disabilities that will become very inspired. You know, what, what advice would you give youngsters out there? Uh, you know, all of our Paralympic sailors uh, have got different d disabilities. Some of them were born with their disabilities, some of them have, have acquired them in, in later life. And, uh, you know, they're all fantastic ambassadors for their sport, by what they do, and hopefully the youngsters can look at them, see what they can achieve, see that they absolutely don't consider themselves disabled at all, and, uh, and they just get out there and they do a sport that they really love and they strive to be the best at it, and that would be my advice to anybody out there, irrespective of whether they're disabled or not. You know, if you want to achieve something, then get out there, give it your all and see how good you are and see what you can achieve, otherwise you'll sit at home and never know what you are capable of.